Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh uh, viewers of Gunjo TV online welcome to another edition of um, weekly environmental so um, this is going to be a uh, maximum half an hour program because I'm on my own today no guests but inshallah next week this time I will get uh, I will have Lamin Tamba as my guest um, the lovable uh, Lamin Tamba um, as you all know, if you are following the uh, main TV, uh, main news outlet, and also the social media, uh, this year there has been flood all over um, West Africa, East Africa, everywhere um, across Africa. Um, these are the effects of global warming. You know, so how can we reduce this um, is the topic of my discussion. But as usual, uh, before, because we are right in the middle of pandemic, and we cannot just ignore because the pandemic also across the world is showing no sign of slowing down. India for three days in a row, they recorded over 90,000 cases per day. Could you imagine that? And also Gambia, the numbers continue to um, escalate, continue to increase. So we have to remind ourselves every day um, the challenge facing us. So before I go to my uh, topic of discussion today, I will give you the update about COVID-19. Then um, we will discuss the ways we can uh, reduce the effect of, the effect of uh, uh, global, uh, global warming because all these floods we are seeing in other part of the world there is wild bush fires you know 2020 actually um, so to the whole world what um, the tax ahead of us that uh, global warming is nothing to be joke about it's nothing to play politic work politic with is is reality people are dying people are losing their livelihood and on top of that we have the pandemic so um, as you are all aware, uh, COVID-19 um, uh, anymore um, started in China in Wuhan provinces. We, but we have to remind ourselves, calling it a China virus with a bit extreme, and is, I think there is a racial uh, undertone to it. But it actually originated in Wuhan provinces in China in um, December 2019. And since uh, the emergence of COVID-19, 27,599,962 people um, got infected. So every two days, uh, these uh, numbers are doubling. Uh, we are having um, every two, three days, we have one million addition. You know, so far, 898,641 people died. And number of people who recovered from uh, COVID stands at 19,688,198. Um, that's um, encouraging and it's worth noting that um, COVID-19 actually is not a death sentence. So that's why people should be encouraged to go and find out their COVID-19 status. Um, they are now testing openly in places across uh, the country. Uh, West Coast region, unfortunately, I don't see anywhere um, in the uh, provinces where they do uh, testing. But right now, you can go to the state independent stadium, you can get uh, tested, you can go to COVID, uh, you can go to um, Demban Clinic, you can get tested, you can go to um, the Bruce B roundabout just by the um, the petroleum house, the big, uh, nice building there, you can go there and you can get tested. And in Brikama also, what they call Bali Johnson, you can go there and get tested. So if you happen to have uh, symptoms of COVID-19, don't sit at home. Don't wait until when you start developing uh, the serious symptoms. If you have persistent cough temperature, go there and rule out COVID-19. It's not a death sentence. But if it is late or if you wait until when the actual uh, pneumonia and other um, 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 advanced symptoms set in, it can be um, nasty. Um, so it's good you go and test. And the good news about also um, people get uh, COVID and recovered, and this recovered population is the center of um, uh, our, uh, on, it's going to help us. It's going to be very, very crucial in our understanding of COVID pathology. And if we develop um, a vaccination, how long it lasts. If people recover, how long this recovery like this, um, the specialty program uh, protein for immunoglobulins, how long they last in our systems so it can uh, continue to protect us. This uh, recovered population will help us. And also the recovered population will help us to, um, to in treatment, 
uh, because if you recovered or in layman time, if you are resistant to a particular pathogen or a virus, you have this specially uh, designed protein in your system called immunoglobulin. And this act as the body soldiers. When there is an infection, they will go to the site and attack the uh, infections. So those who recovered will have these uh, soldiers, body soldiers or immunoglobulin in their systems already. So if you should take the um, recovered population blood and spin it and take the liquid component and transfuse it into people who are currently suffering from COVID, uh, they should recover because this specially programmed protein, immunoglobulin, will just go directly and mop up um, 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 uh, COVID and, and clear them. So currently 7 million and 13,123 people are currently infected with COVID-19. And out of that, 6,952,785 are in mild conditions and 60,333 are, um, are in critical conditions. So those in um, mild condition include people asymptomatic uh, 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 patients. These are people tested, they are positive, but they are not showing any sign of uh, symptoms. But they are capable of actually transmitting, infecting other people. So that's why it's essential uh, for us if we are going out to wear a face mask. And I have to uh, stress this, face mask is not protective. It wouldn't protect you from COVID, but it will, uh, pro uh, it will prevent you from transferring COVID to somebody. So if you wear uh, a, a mask and I wear a mask, we cannot infect each other. That's this um, uh, recent rationale be be uh, behind it. Like as I talk here without a face mask, I generate aerosol. So if I should happen to be COVID, anybody um, um, around me, um, which my aerosol can read minimum of two, two, two uh, meters, I can infect them. But if you have a face mask, if I talk, my aerosol coming from my mouth and my nose will stay around here, so I wouldn't be able to uh, transmit uh, the virus to others. But if um, um, you are on a, uh, this surgical mask, and somebody without a mask should be very close to you, they can infect you. So it's not protective, but it's preventive. I hope people understand that before uh, you, once you are with um, 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 a face mask, you feel that uh, with that uh, full sense of security that I've got the face mask myself. But uh, the, the best way to prevent ourselves is to stay at home as much as possible. If you need to go out, then you put on a face mask. And still, regular hand washing are essential. These are the, uh, 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 the, the holy grain of preventing oneself from COVID-19. With a soap, any kind of soap, as long as the soap ladders and make so uh, the soap stay in your body and you still rub it for at least minimum of 40 seconds. This is enough time, contact time uh, to uh, dissolve the outer layer of the virus. And once that is done, virus is as good as that. You know, and what are the symptoms of COVID yet? We have to continue to remind ourselves and these keep um, 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 expanding. And this week I read an article very, very interesting, which explained why we um, 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 uh, see these kind of symptoms. Um, but that's, I can't discuss, is beyond uh, the um, level of this uh, presentation. But basically, you have headache, um, sore throat sometimes, and also fever is very common, and dry cough is, is very consistent, and also loss of sense of smell and taste. You know, but um, currently 60,338 are critically ill. That's across the world by COVID-19. These are the population that will need hospital stay somehow, you know, so can they can get the support uh, from healthcare personnel. And it's worth also mentioning that still there is no definite cure uh, for COVID-19, but if you happen to have COVID-19, definitely can be managed. And there are also foods we can eat, you know, actually generally um, balanced diet eating, uh, uh, good food that include greeneries, vegetables, or fruits and nuts, you know, and food rich in vitamin C. And these include um, 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 lemon, uh, tomatoes, you know, cabbages, and even um, um, uh, cucumbers. So this can help modulate. These are called immune modulators. They will help you to build your immune uh, system and also to keep fit. Sitting around one place, um, um, it can weaken your immune system and it can help you gain weight. And we know weight, overweight in it, obesity is also an underlying uh, condition. So we should try to eat well and, and, and also um, keep uh, fit. 
So after that, um, I'm going to give you the numbers for the countries that are very close to the Gambia. And as long as there are cases along these countries, we are uh, not out of the wood yet. And in fact, Gambia now is uh, uh, around our part of the world, is one country that is definitely uh, seeing an increasing surge in numbers. Even though <coughs> in the recent days, you know, there is um, a significant reduction in the dead rate as a result of COVID-19. Um, Ivory Coast so far registered 18,701 cases and past 24 hours they recorded 113. You know, for the first time, Senegal, um, in many months, they don't register any new number past 24 hours, but so far they recorded 14,014 uh, cases. Um, Guinea Conakry um, so far recorded 9,816 and past 24 hours they recorded 18. Gambia, 3,000 so far, 3,275. Past 24 hours, Gambia have 74 new cases. <clears throat> Mauritania so far recorded 7,165 and 23 um, new cases. Mali, Bissau, and Sierra Leone, they all don't um, register any new cases. But so far, Mali recorded 2,870 COVID-19 cases. Guinea-Bissau, 2,245 cases. Sierra Leone 2055 so far, and one uh, new case. Burkina Faso so far 1,463. Past 24 hours they recorded 11 new cases, and Liberia 1,311 and 14 uh, uh, new cases. So my topic of discussion today is about. Um, <laughs> excuse me. How can we stop all uh, global warming? Because it is because of global warming we are seeing at these adverse weather uh, conditions. In our part of the world, is flood. Um, these days, there are uh, rains everywhere, you know, across West Africa, and also even in East Africa, a lot of rains and places all flooding. But you go to other part of the world, it's about bushfires, like in California and all that. So healing the planet starts in our garages, in our kitchens, and also in at our dining room tables. Our way of life basically um, will determine how we can mitigate uh, the effect of uh, global warming. So um, nations around the world are upping uh, their game in the fight against climate change. Um, well, even in the U.S., uh, recently, uh, President Trump of those people announced the U.S. will draw from the Paris Agreement. You know, that's completely opposite what the rest of the world is trying to do. And despite this uh, reckless move by these idiots, uh, American mayor, state leaders, country, uh, county officials, governors, and major companies, and millions of citizens across um, countries around the world are still in and when it comes to the agreement and supporting the global living future warming to uh, below two degrees. So idiots like Donald Trump, um, but of um, Bolsonaro of Brazil and also that idiot, um, uh, the Indian uh, president, I'm not sure, uh, but when you look at uh, these three countries who are actually um, um, climate change deniers, they are the most affected with COVID-19. So that shows um, 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 responsible leadership um, is really, really, really essential. It doesn't matter how much money, how advanced your country is, if the leadership is not um, up to scratch, uh, things are going to continue to fall apart. So which um, Trump will draw in from the Paris Agreement, but majority of Americans still uh, support um, um, belief in climate change and they are doing their individual bits, you know, to make sure that they contribute in mitigating the effects of uh, climate change or reversing it. So even better, a new initiative uh, by uh, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, uh, giving a open, open layer of uh, the movement about his, he asked mayors from the 100 most popular cities in the in the U.S. Uh, to share their plans for making their buildings and transformation system run cleaner and more efficiently. So um, this is very encouraging because most of the uh, rich people in America, anyway, they share the same um, uh, thinking or the same idea about uh, climate change, like Donald Trump's and all that. Or the 20 that shows the greatest potential for cutting the dangerous carbon pollution that's driving climate change will see a total of 70 million in technical assistance funding provided uh, by, by Bloomberg. You know, I think he made similar uh, 
um, donation to African countries. But we know how our, con com uh, com uh, our countries are and how our uh, policy makers are, how corrupt they are. Once they have this money, they think of actually building uh, concrete jungles instead of uh, investing in the right um, uh, plants that mitigate uh, global warming. So it is important for us to remember the equally vital contribution that can be made by private citizens. Like anybody, we can all do something. I will give you uh, what anybody can do, you know, which is to say, uh, by change only happen when individual take actions, you know. So Deputy Director of NAT's Clean Power Plan Initiative said there is no other way if it doesn't start with people, you know. If, if it doesn't start with people. So the goal is simple. Carbon dioxide is the climate's worst enemy. This is the black smoke uh, when we uh, burn things that you see. When all cars in Africa move, the black smoke will use carbon dioxide. So anytime hydrocarbons, uh, uh, material, wood material, oil, um, anything, all kind of hydrocarbon, if you burn them, the, the, the one of these uh, byproduct is carbon dioxide. This is our biggest enemy. The, the, the more we can reduce this, the better for the, for the world, you know, um, is that simple, but is that difficult also because we are still addicted to these uh, hydrocarbon, to fuels and others. You know, a lot of, lot of efforts has been made to, to reverse this, but it's, it can, it's not catching up quick enough. So the energy we use to power our homes, cars, smartphones, by using less of it, we can cope our own contribution to climate change while also saving money. You know, here are a dozen of easy ways I'm going to give you how we can uh, reverse uh, or slow down the effect of uh, 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 climate change. So anybody within, uh, you will be able to find, you know, something in these 12 ways that you can do to um, stop uh, climate change. And the first thing and the simplest is speaking up about it. That's what I'm doing now. What I'm doing and helping to reverse the effect of climate change by speaking about it. You know, what's the single biggest way you can make an impact on global climate change? Talk to your friends and families. You know, and make your representation making a good decisions. So by voicing your concern uh, via social media, exactly what I'm doing now, or better yet, directly to your elected officials, you send a message that you can you care about the warming world. Encourage um, your parliamentarians to enact laws that limit carbon uh, emissions and require polluters to pay for the emission they produce. And the main reason elected officials do anything difficult is because their consequences make them. You know, uh, unfortunately, this is not uh, most of the time. It's not the situation in Gambia. In fact, we elected people; they're supposed to be our servants, but we end up becoming their 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 their, their slaves. You know, that cannot continue. We we create these people opportunities. You know, they have the opportunity to go to the parliament. You know, collect salaries, travel around the world, collect pardons. You know, so the minimum mean we have to be putting pressure on them that they, when they go to that parliament to make laws, let them come up with laws that will help, you know, the... Okay, sorry, somebody is talking about my screen setting. Um, sorry about that. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, somebody sent a message, sorry about this distraction about my screen setting. I don't know. Anyway, so by just talking up, um, talking about uh, speaking up, uh, I'm talking about we can go to a parliamentary and task them. But this is not happening enough in the Gambia. We vote um, people into office. The next time you see them when they need the vote again, that cannot continue if we want to develop our nations. Yes, it's good we blame the president, the box stop at him. But the box started with us, ourselves. We are the government. You know, we support the power actually reside with us. And, you know, we are moving in the right direction. It's not that the citizens are not playing their part to the maximum, because at least for the past three years, nobody will come into your house 3 a.m. and pick you up and make you disappear. We can all express our opinion. So we should all try and, you know, put that pressure on government, on elected officials, on our councillors, you know, and even our alcalos, you know, let them be proactive. You know, so speaking up is number one. And also, um, 
power your home with renewable energy. You know, we have solar, solar technology is everywhere. And as time goes on, it's not as, as difficult, it's not capital intensive as it used to be. You know, we can, you know, at least if everybody should get a small power, um, 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 uh, solar panel on your house when now even when now it is about at least your bulbs you power them with um with uh, this renewable energy or wind or whatever might be those might be too power uh, uh capital in intensive but the solar panel you can we have panels now that you don't need a battery they can directly convert the sun um 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 dc uh, power to 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 ac to to uh, light up our, our bulbs you know, so choose a utility company that generate at least half its power from wind or solar and, and has been satisfied by green energy. Unfortunately, uh, these areas is one, these are areas now work are not uh, very much into it. In fact, they are struggling still with these petrochemical um, engines, much more thinking about renewable energy. But this is the time for them to, to, to start thinking seriously about this grid energy because this is what everybody is doing anyway. So an organization that bets renewable energy option, if that isn't possible for you, take a look at your electric bill. You know, many utilities now list other ways to support renewable sources on their monthly statement and websites. If you are in the West, uh, this is possible, but now they don't even issue um, 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 bills most of the time. You have to go there and just um, uh, inquire and pay. You know, and also weather rise, weather rise, weather rise. How? What do you mean by that? You know, we can build uh, buildings, um, you know, building, uh, build heatings and cooling are among the big, uh, biggest users of energy. You know, air condition like the country I live here. You cannot live in a house without the air conditions. You know, so this about time people start uh, thinking green. You know, investing in in and you know building the kind of houses which are properly insulated. Even when it's too hot, it's not very very cool. Uh, it's not very hot inside. And also, if you cool it for a short time, the coolness uh, can stop can stay there for a long time. And also during the cold weather, once you warm it for a short period of time. Uh, the house can remain uh, hot. These are all possible, and it can be possible if you build house with a with a with a mod a mod house is far better, uh, uh, more efficient in in sealing you from the elements of the water. So building. Heating and cooling are among the biggest users of energy. Indeed, heating and air condition account for almost half of home energy use. And we can make um, space more energy efficient by sealing drafts and ensuring that it's actually uh, uh, adequately insulated. In England, I remember we have a double basin houses whereby is um, during the winter, it keeps the heat you know, more you know, uh, in the house. And also, when you know the temperature is a little bit high, it, it keeps the house a little bit um, cooler. So number four, let's invest in energy efficient appliances. You know, now you go to any electrical store, you have people, you have uh, different ranges of um, uh, electrical appliances. Some of them they might be a little bit expensive, but they tell you how energy efficient they are. So we should be ready to pay for that little bit extra just to make sure that we use appliances like our heating kettles, you know, the light bulbs, they will tell you these are energy efficient one, the green bulbs and all that. It all contributes. You know, since uh, the first implementation in 1987, efficiency standard for uh, dozens of appliance products have kept 2.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide out of the air. Could you imagine that? You know, we don't take uh, statistics, unfortunately, still in the Gambia, even um, when we have rice to say, we don't even know we have how many people are in any particular locality, much more these kind of data. But um, they are not difficult. Is that that uh, we are not uh, are proactive? We are always reactive. You know, it's now they will be thinking about mitigating because the flood is killing people. And it is happening every year. But we are not putting uh, mechanisms in place that can mitigate it. So we can invest on uh, energy efficient uh, appliances. Could you imagine, you know, since that started, um, 2.3 billion um, tons of carbon uh, dioxide has been excluded from the uh, atmosphere. So that's about the same amount as the annual carbon pollution covered by nearly 444 million cars. That's a lot of, lot of um, carbon dioxide that if we all use efficient um, 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 uh, appliances in the houses, this is how low 
uh, uh, this is the amount of carbon we can take out uh, from the atmosphere. So energy efficiency is the lowest cost way to reduce emissions um, when shopping for refrigerators, washing machines, and all that. Um, we can go for um, energy efficient ones. And the number five, to reduce water waste. Water is essential in life. There is no way it should never, never be um, uh, wasted under any circumstances. But how can we do it? Even simple things. When you are brushing your teeth, make sure the tap is closed until when you are finished, you switch it on. You know, saving water reduces carbon pollution too um, because it takes a lot of energy to pump heat and treat your, our waters. So we should take a uh, sort of showers. You know, if you go into the shower, if you are black like me, you're never going to turn into a Caucasian because I spend a lot of time in the shower. So let's make our shower times as short as possible. You know, and you wouldn't believe these are overhead showers. They take a lot of, lot of, lot of water. You know, you can even revert to the old uh, fashion way, put the water in a, in a bucket. You you touch yourself that you, every day you use only one bucket whereby you scoop uh, with a utility cup and, and pour it on, on, on your head. You know, these all count. And believe me, you know, we, we take these things for granted. But if you read the Quran, you reflect on it. All these things, Almighty Allah is going to ask us, you know, how, how, how careful, how, you know, our, our little things, every little things we do in this world is all going to count. So, you know, brushing your teeth, switch off the uh, water, you know, and also see to water sense uh, level fixtures and appliances. So the um, EPA estimated that if just one out of every 100 um, individual in the world uh, were uh, retrofitted with water efficient fixtures, about 100 million kilowatt hours of electricity per year will be seized, avoiding 80,000 tons of global warming and pollution. You know, here where I work in our labs, you know, you just put your hand underneath the tap, the water will come. These are heat sensors ones. So if you take off your hand, you know, the water will stop. You know, it's not like the old fashioned way you turn because um, in the lab, when you come, you don't want to uh, infect the head of the tap. So these are some more people start in, installing them in, in, in their houses. And maybe the initial outlay might be a little bit expensive, but if you all try and put this in our houses, we save a lot of water. A water bill force, that's where we start enjoying, you know, will go down and we help the world. So number six, I think I should be able to finish this in two minutes. I'm not sure. So uh, and also the food we eat, you know, can contribute to global warming. So approximately 10 percent of, um, for example, U.S. energy is going into growing, processing, packaging and sipping food. So about 40 percent of it just wind, winds up in uh, landfill side, end up in the landfill side. So if you are wasting, um, are wasting less food, you are likely cutting down on energy consumption. And since livestock produces are among the most resource intensive produce, eating meat free uh, meals can make a big difference too. Yeah, so cows need to go and eat the coats, you know, you need to provide the fodder. So all these contributed to, um, to uh, global warming because they 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 destroy the 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 the, the plants all those um um plant uh, even grasses they all contributed some some amount of oxygen and also they help they suck oxygen from the atmosphere so the less meat you eat you are also indirectly contributing to uh, global warming so let's i'm not saying we all go um 100 veggie but let's uh, try to eat as much vegetable as we can and also generally you know you know, the more you eat, you know that you are also indirectly contributing to uh, global warming. So let's eat moderately as advised by our religion that if you eat, you should divide your, your stomach into three compartments. You leave a space for air, you leave a space for water, and one space, one third for um, for um, for for food, you know, but it's not uncommon. You see, it's typical African, we eat so much rice, you know, we, by the time it's time to drink, we can't even uh, breathe. That is wrong. It's on Islamic and also it's not healthy and, and also it's not environmental friendly. You know, so and also the light bulbs, you know, simple, simple things. LED light bulbs use up to 80 percent le le uh, less energy than conventional incandescent uh, lights. So the um, you go to the shop, ask them, I want uh, LED bulbs. 
these lead bulbs are very, very energy efficient compared to the traditional um, uh, incandescent one you see with the filament like this. So a 10 watt uh, lead uh, that replaces your traditional 60 watt bulb will save you $125, uh, $125 over the light bulb fans. For example, if your light bulbs will last two years and one guy is, is using 10 watt light bulbs and this one is using 60 watt um, uh, uh, bulbs, you know, they will save uh, 125. That's like uh, five times, five, 25, 12, you know, over seven, seven, seven thousand, seven thousand uh, two hundred and fifty, you know, dollars you can save depending on the kind of bulb you use in your electricity bill. This is massive, and I hope this one will ring some bell with Gambians because electricity um, uh, bills in the Gambia is probably one of the most expensive across the world. So, and also let's pull the plugs. What do I mean by taking together the the outlets in your home? Uh, likely power about 60 different devices and afraid load for home in the US and audio and video devices. So unfortunately, I have to be using the example of US because in Africa, most of these are simple things. We don't take records of them. But it's the same anyway. You, if you, you know, it's the same power uh, outlet we use. So audio and video, your cordless vacuums and power tools on other electronics use. Um, energy, even when they are not charging, these idle loads across all US households add up to about out of 50 large um, power plants in the US. So don't leave fully charged devices plugged into your homes. You know, if something is charged, just take it out. Unplug rarely use devices or plug them into power strips and timers and adjust your computers and monitors to automatically power down the lowest power mode uh, when not in use. That again is simple, but it saves uh, energy. Again, this might not be very efficient to uh, the Gambia standard because we still drive the uh, gasoline uh, dependent gas, which uh, most countries are moving away from it. So gas smart cars, such as hybrids and fully electrical vehicles save fuel and money. And once all cars and light trucks meet uh, 2025 clean car standards, which means averaging 54 uh, miles per gallon, they will be uh, mainstay for good reasons relative to a national fleet of vehicles that average only 28 miles per gallon in 2011. So um, in that context, American will uh, spend like 80 billion less at pump uh, each year and cut their automotive emission by half. Before you buy a new set of wheels, compare fuel economy performance. Yeah, you may have to buy um, you, um, um, just a little bit of uh, financial outlay, but you know, you end up overall, you save uh, 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 money. Also, um, let's maintain our cars. You know, these little things, but they all count. Um, if all of us um, kept uh, our tires properly inflated, we could save 1.2 billion of gas each year. You know, and a simple turn up and can boost miles per gallon anywhere from 4% to 40%. And a new air filter can get you a 10% um, uh, boost. So let's rethink the planes, trains, and auto um, cars. You know, choosing to live in workable, smart growth cities and town with quality public transportation lead to less driving, less money, and spend on fuel, and less pollution in air. So less frequent uh, flying uh, make a difference um, to so this is where Africa is been disadvantaged because we are the less tra travel, we have the less industries. You know, when it comes to um, the effect of climate change, we suffer the most. So it's about time um, we probably have to start uh, taking these major polluters uh, to court so they can um, uh, do the writing. So air transport is a major source of climate uh, pollution. So if you can take a train instead, do that. Shrink your carbon profile, how we can shrink our problem for you can offset the carbon you produce by purchasing carbon offsets, which represent clean power and that you can add to the nation energy grids in place of power from fossil fuels. You know, but not all carbon offset companies are alike. Do your homework to find the best. And also in Gambia right now, we are in rain. Everybody can plant a tree. If you don't have a space, sponsor somebody to plant a tree for you. And you can even go to people's shop and tell them I have a, an orange tree for you for free. All I need is to keep it um, alive. 
you know, these are simple things we can contribute and mitigate the effect of uh, global warming. And thank you all uh, for your listening. And this is the um, end of today's show. Inshallah, tomorrow we are primering a new show. Um, it's dialogue with uh, the youths and Ibrahim Ajani, inshallah, will be uh, leading this one. I'm looking, really, really looking forward to it. Yes, of course, I'm not country, I'm not a youth anymore, but uh, I know I'll be inspired. And I call on, you know, if you have a kid, you know, this is a, is a program they need to uh, be watching, you know, because Gambia youths, they need um, help. Um, past 22 years, everybody suffered, but the youth suffered most, and they need to be reorientated and direct. So that's why we uh, come up with this. So we have a dialogue, a frank uh, discussion with the youths. And as time goes on, we'll be having just, you know, from the youths, the affected, the people we're trying to talk to. Thank you all for your time. Uh, good news, uh, online TV uh, viewers today, no comments, but I appreciate your time and please share uh, these um, uh, videos and also you can watch, actually watch this program in uh, YouTube and also through Twitter. Thank you very much. So, and also don't forget to press that uh, like button, you know, as um, you uh, watch this program. Thank you.